So you might be a little mad that we're using your camera, but it's all for the inspirational effort to uh, give you a little bit of encouragement. Got the guys here behind me, obviously working on the cars. We're going to kind of kill it this year. You and your father. And I love you guys. Be back. Good morning, so welcome to sort of season four. This time again from just south of Orlando, Florida, uh, Sebring International Raceway. It is considerably colder today, and I say that kind of lightly based on where we've been this year, but it should make for some good driving conditions as we have a lot less humid and cooler uh, weather. So we are here for day two of our little unofficial test dress rehearsal, and we are getting suited up, uh, getting ready to go out for uh, another this time a full day of driving, which should be a lot of fun. Okay, crew, well, just like yesterday, today is not like an official race or anything like that. This is purely just practice what we would call testing where we're just um, essentially getting seat time back in the cars and you know just getting reacclimated to the speed in the car for the actual season so the biggest thing today is that we put on four new um, shocks or struts um, on my car just to freshen up the car so we're not out here trying to you know there's nothing to win you're not out here with lap time so it's more, more or less just sort of practice having fun and uh, making sure everything checks out so we can make it to California and be ready to go. So I think we're on track for our first session here. Again, great weather uh, for, for the car, so I'm stoked.
one of the things I get asked a lot throughout my racing is, are the cars street legal? What is the car like? Oh, I have a, you know, I have a BMW or whatever. But I think what's important to know about this car and really most of the cars when people say they race and stuff like that nowadays, they're, you know, they're they're factory built from the manufacturer. Meaning, you know, when I used to race Porsche Cup cars, that's a race car that's purpose built from. Porsche. This is a purpose-built race car built from BMW. So this isn't like a track car that you put, you know, maybe slick tires on or something like that or a racing seat in. Um, this is completely designed by BMW Engineering, uh, completely manufactured from BMW Motorsport as a race car. This was never a street car. This is never um, going to be a street car. It's not street legal. So to clear that up, I feel like it'd be nice to show you guys sort of the cockpit and and what I'm going through when I'm out driving and racing. Starting on the wheel, I really don't use most of these buttons. Probably the most used button here is my radio. I am on a, you know, almost like a walkie-talkie radio system that's integrated in my helmet so I can communicate with uh, the crew and, um, and anyone else on the channel, but mostly just used for my crew. So this, press this, talk, pretty simple. This knob here is my wiper. Um, if it's raining, it gets wet, you can kind of turn that up and it will automatically use the wipers. This dim actually just dims the how bright the switches are. So once I turn this guy on, now I kind of have like the ignition on, just like you would start your car. So I can kind of dim how bright uh, the lights are. These are high beams. I really only use these in a race situation to alert slower cars that I am coming up on them to sort of uh, just help facilitate the flow of lap traffic. Some people use them to distract the competitor. I think that's kind of bogus, so I don't ever use those in terms of uh, trying to pass someone. But high beams, left and right turn signals, don't really ever use these. This is just a wiper if you just needed a hit of a wiper. Um, PSL is another very used button. This is our pit speed limit. So when at every track the in the pit lane, there's a speed limit. Um, and so this just kind of automatically caps the car at a certain speed so you don't get fined or a penalty for speeding. Uh, the dash button allows me to cycle through different display modes from, from more information to maybe a more simplified version for a race or qualified situation. And this is a drink uh, button. If you had a drink bottle hooked up, you could use that to uh, have some water as you drive. Uh, the way I'm shifting is with these paddles on either side. So you have downshift here, uh, upshift on the right. The whole dash system, which is, you know, shows everything from all my engine and oil temperatures, diff temps, to um, what gear I'm in, my shift lights, lap times, stuff like that. So a lot of all my information is rolling through this data system. And then kind of lastly is coming over to this button panel again, lots of buttons, but you really don't use much of, much of them. Um, to turn the car on, you have a start stop there. These DSC and FDS, this is actually a uh, type of traction control. DSC and FDS is actually like a throttle map. Each driver is different. I don't run any sort of traction control, but there is sort of like a medium version of traction control if you just wanted a little assistance. Um, there's a full version, which you might run in the rain or if you're like a, a, a newer driver, let's say. But I just run this completely off. I feel like you have a lot better feel with the car. Albeit, you know, you have a little bit more risk of spinning out and stuff like that, but I do think it's better to run it off. And then FDS is kind of just... Uh, my understanding is how um, how quickly it's actually shifting gears. So you'd want to change this if it's in the wet and maybe you want to have a little bit smoother gear shift. Um, but in the dry, mostly this you're just running one setting. This is just a rain light. If it's like really low vis, you might want to throw a, a light on the back so people can see you. Front and rear defrosters, high beams, AC. There is AC in here fog lights, main power switch, fire switch is a whole like fire system in here. So if you are on fire or something, you could pop this and you know, there's nozzles everywhere that would extinguish, uh, put the gear in park. This is uh, mostly like the crew guys use this to pump the car out, make sure it's completely empty before they put new fuel in it. This is the gear shifter. So because it's, it's kind of like an automatic in a sense, you really just pop this over to drive when you're ready to go over and up for reverse stuff like that. So once you set this, you're good. Um, this is kind of a lever that I don't think you'd find in a street car because this is like a PDK automatic in a way. Um, you want to put this down so when you do spin out and everything is engaged in drive, you don't uh, damage the drivetrain by rolling backwards if you spin. So you put this down when you're about to go out so that way you're kind of all, all good to go. On the floor here is a ballast box. So a lot of times you're adding weight to the car or taking weight out. So 
because of the series that we run it all has to be secured properly so we would just put lead plates in here to add weight to the car you can see the fire bottle down there which is all armed and hooked up throughout the uh the car that blue thing is like a camera system you can see i have a one camera up there that's on me and there's actually kind of hard to see there's another camera that sits below the mirror shooting out. So I have a two camera setup that's always rolling. Yeah, I hope that kind of sheds some more light on what I'm driving and, you know, the reason why this is, is much more, you know, this is, this is motorsports. This is, this is racing. This isn't just taking a car out on a track and, and, you know, and going to a track day. This is all very purpose built, legit, uh, uh, thing. So anyways, it's been a fun car. It's not sort of the most exciting car I've driven in my career. Um, but uh, it, is a, it is a good platform um, for people looking to get into it or even for some good spec racing, which is what we do. So anyways, BMW M2 CSR. interesting session because I was trying to do a head cam POV for you guys and so I used this uh, like the head mount but uh, typically the camera sits way too high so I used this little extension rod to drop it down here in a first try it seemed okay but then as soon as I got out there it was just way too hard to like really see well enough to like 
actually drive well. It worked, but uh, I think it ended up being a little bit too low and I honestly just couldn't really drive to my fullest capacity. So I ended up taking this off and just throwing it in the passenger seat because it was just annoying after like two laps, but I did try. We just did uh, the oil service on it. You already um, did that? Yep. We're uh, getting the wheels off so we can flush the brake fluid so it's fresh for Sonoma. And then, uh, see what we gotta do for rear differential fluid. I'm gonna help Tyler and Alden bleed the brakes real quick. So while they open up the nozzles of the caliper, I'm gonna kind of be pumping the pedal and helping them actually build pre pressure in the system. Close. Hell of a 